Today we're going to go over some of the best tips and tricks for the Galaxy Tab S9. Also is going to work for the Plus and Ultra versions as well. A couple of things I like to do before I start using a new tablet from Samsung. I would go into settings, scroll down to advanced features, tap on side button. You've got a couple different options here. If you press and hold the power button, it's on wake Bixby by default. I like to switch that over to power off menu. Then it gives you power off and restart. You can also go right into those side button settings right there as well. You can also double press the power button to quick launch the camera, or you can use it to open up pretty much any app on the tablet. Now the next option is sort of personal preference, but you'll notice you've got the taskbar down here at the bottom. It's kind of nice to have in landscape mode, but if for some reason you want to turn that off, go into settings, display, and then just go down to where it says taskbar, and there you can toggle it on or off depending on which way you like it. Another thing that I always like to do on Samsung phones and tablets is go up in the notification shade to where the quick toggles are and make sure Dolby Atmos is turned on. If for some reason you don't see that in there, you may have to hit the little plus symbol and see if it's available down here. And then you can tap and hold on it to drag it up to the available buttons. You can also tap and hold on it. If you want to choose between voice, music, movie, for me, I typically leave it on auto. Another thing you may want to do is you'll notice when you swipe down, you've got device control and media output. If you swipe down again, you can hit the little three dots, go into quick panel layout, go into brightness control and switch it over to show always and then done. You can also just say don't show under device control and media output buttons. Then you no longer have those two buttons there. Also under settings in display, you've got a lot of different options in here. You have the option of dark or light mode sort of personal preference. I feel like if you're concerned about battery life, you might want to switch it over to dark mode. But again, it's going to be personal preference on which one you choose. Another option is adaptive brightness. I typically turn that off because I like to have control over how bright the screen is. I personally leave off adaptive brightness. Sometimes it's just a little finicky and I just like to do screen brightness manually. There's also the option of motion smoothness. You can choose standard or adaptive. Again, it's going to be personal preference. Adaptive is going to be a little smoother at 120 hertz, but if you don't mind the 60 hertz standard option, it's actually going to save you battery life. So definitely something to consider. Another thing you may want to change in here is font size and style. Besides choosing which font style you want to use, it also has a bold font toggle that you can turn on as well. Another option under display that you may want to consider is going to be the navigation bar. You've got buttons or swipe gestures to choose from. You can also reorder the buttons down here. If you prefer the back button to be on the left, you can also move the three buttons from the right to the left hand side in here as well. I know some people like the swipe gestures over navigation buttons, but to me on a larger screen like this, I feel like it's just faster to use the navigation buttons. You probably noticed if you go left of the home screen, you've got the Google Discover News Feed, which is pretty nice to have. But if you tap and hold and then swipe over, you can see you've got the option of Samsung Free, or you can just turn it off altogether. So when you swipe left to the home screen, it does nothing. But for me, I kind of like having Google Discover on there over Samsung Free. Again, just personal preference, but definitely nice that you've got some options there. You may already know this one, but if you tap and hold on the home screen, go to settings. You've got two grids, the home screen and the app screen. So if you want to fit more apps across, you can change it to 10 by 5, 8 by 5, or it's on 6 by 5 by default. Same thing with the apps when you swipe up. If you don't want to keep going through so many pages, you can change it from 6 by 5 to 8 by 5 or 10 by 5 if you've got a lot of apps on there. You can also choose if you want to add new apps to the home screen right in here versus just in the app tray. You can also show the app screen button on the home screen in here. So it's just an extra icon you can tap on. Also on the lock screen, there's a few things you can customize on here. You've got these widgets right down here. If you go into settings, you can turn those off over here on the right. There's a toggle for each one of those. You can also reorder those. Now, if you go into the lock screen settings, you just tap on lock screen. You can actually resize the clock or you have several different styles to choose from. You can also choose a different color for the clock. You can also choose what these shortcuts are down in the corner. There's a few that you can use without unlocking like calculator, camera, do not disturb, 
flashlight or voice recorder. You can also add your contact information in here if you want. Let's say you left your tablet behind. You may want to put your name and number on there. So if it's somebody honest that found it, they would at least be able to contact you. Now, if you go into settings, advanced features, motion and gestures, you've got several different options to choose from. Double tap to turn on or off the screen. You can also keep screen on while viewing, cover screen to mute. There's also about three different ways you can do screenshots on here. One is palm swipe to capture. Another way is using the S Pen and choosing Smart Select. You could also go up in the notification shade where you get your shortcuts, hit the plus symbol, tap and drag, take screenshot down to the bottom and then hit done. Then you've got that as a shortcut where you just tap that and it does a screenshot. If you tap and hold, it also gives you other options as well. And then of course, volume down and the power button at the same time is another way to do a screenshot. Another nice feature to have with the S Pen, if you hit the little settings icon here, scroll down to more S Pen settings. There's an option to warn if the S Pen is left behind. Kind of a nice feature to have that just lets you know if the S Pen isn't connected or if you might have lost it. You've also got air actions with the S Pen. You can do standard or compact. You've also got air view where if you just hover over something, it'll give you a preview or start moving down if you're trying to scroll. You can also choose pointer only or preview only as well. Over here on the sidebar, it gives you shortcuts to different apps to choose between live messages, people, smart select, tasks, weather, tool, reminder, and clipboard. So again, sort of personal preference on that one. Just nice to have different options over on the edge panel. Another nice feature on this tablet is you can do split screen and there's a couple different ways. You can just tap and drag an icon to the left or right hand screen. You can even have the same app open if you want to copy and paste from one note to the other. Now you can also do recent apps if you have some of the apps already open. Just tap on the icon and then say open in split screen view. Choose your other app. You can adjust it there in the middle just by tapping and holding. Or if you tap it, you got the option to switch sides switch between top and bottom. And if you hit the little star, it makes a shortcut of those apps that you just made into split screen. So then you can easily switch right back to what you had set up. Or you can drag an app to floating window. We can move it wherever you would like or just drag down to the bottom to remove it. Now, if you plan on keeping this tablet for years, you may want to go into battery and device care, tap on battery, more battery settings. And there's an option that says protect battery, mainly so that it only charges up to 85% instead of 100, which should make the life of the battery a lot better, especially if you're always charging this or it's just always plugged in and it's at 100%, which really isn't that good for your battery. Another nice option is gonna be Samsung DeX. It's a pretty nice feature to have. Definitely makes this feel a little bit closer like a laptop or a desktop experience. It'll put some shortcuts down here at the bottom. Apps and navigation over here on the left hand side. One advantage I feel like you get with Samsung devices is they make it pretty easy to just take files off of your tablet or phone and copy it to an external drive by just plugging it into the charging port. I've tried to do the same thing on some other Android devices and it's just not as easy as on Samsung. But you can also use this as a second screen where you can use this as an additional display on your Galaxy Book or Windows PC. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.